Hey everybody and welcome back to Mindfully Trading where I share educational videos about trading the forex market in particular as well as my own journey as I grow and develop as a trader. And in this video today as I'm recording this it's Monday the 12th of June. It is currently 10 o'clock in the morning GMT and I'm just about to go through my watch list for the week for the currency pair Great British Pound US Dollar which is the pair that I trade, I day trade every day if there is a trading opportunity. So at the start of the week, my usual routine is to go through some technical analysis, go through some fundamental analysis, get an idea of what the charts are saying for the week and any news releases that are coming out and basically get my overall bias for the week as to whether I'm going to be long or short bias. And that's what I'm going to go through with you in this video today. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Any of the software and resources that I mention or use in this video will be linked in the description below as well. So make sure you check those out if you're interested in any of those and let's get to it. So I'm going to start off with technical analysis. So this is where I'm going to go through top-down analysis approach on the charts here on TradingView platform. So I'm going to start off on the weekly time frame. Now it's important to note that this is obviously the strategy that I use. And for day trading, I use a combination of the higher time frames, mainly the weekly and the daily, to mark any key levels. And these levels are what I use uh, in confluence with other indicators and setups to basically gauge my trading entries for the week. So I will use the weekly and the daily I will also use a bit of the four hourly time frame, but then I'll mostly drop to a faster time frame for my trade execution each day, which is usually the five minute time frame. But for today, the purpose is to just analyze the charts for the week and get an idea on the bias. So for that, I'm going to start off on the weekly, we're going to drop to the daily, and then finally on the four hourly time frame. So as you can see here, I'm not going to edit this too much because we are still within all of these levels. But these horizontal black lines represent institutional price levels. And they are at key levels in price. So this one is at 1.2350, this is at 1.24, this is at 1.2450, 1.25 and so on. And they just mark key levels where institutions and banks tend to have um, orders set up. So it can generate liquidity, it can be a magnet for price to pull back to, and it can provide some interesting trade opportunities. So that's why I have those in there. And at the very top, this blue line marks this re weekly level here, which is where price has previously come to and dropped as part of this previous downtrend. But at the moment, we seem to be bouncing back up. Now, we came to this level and we had a very big bearish candle on the weekly. And since then, we seem to have had a pullback and the weekly seems to be pushing up. Now, what I'm very interested in looking at now is the previous week, which, as you can see, was a strong bullish candle because price opened... Here we had a little pullback down, we gathered some liquidity and then price pushed up. So we've got a long lower wick and a big body up. It shows that price is pushing up. So from that candlestick pattern alone, my immediate response is to think that I'm going to be pretty bullish this week. I'm going to be looking for longs. Now we've pushed past this previous area of resistance, so I will remove that and remove these lines, which are daily levels. And what I'm interested in seeing this week is how price reacts around this weekly level because it's pushed up. Probability shows that it's going to return to this key level here because there will be orders and liquidity sitting there. It's been a previous level of possible resistance. Now the question is whether or not price is going to retrace to there and whether the sellers are going to maintain control at this level. We might get so, so a pattern like this on a faster time frame and it might come back down or this week we might see a break of this level. It could be a false break and come back down or it could retest and push up. So there are a few scenarios of this level that I will be watching this week. So I'm just dropping to the daily time frame, and I'm just going to highlight the range of the previous week to just see in more detail of what price did. And if you watch my video last week, my weekly outlook for the week commencing the 5th of June, um, it's quite nice to see that I was pretty accurate with that because my initial plan was that price was pushing up, but it may pull back to gather liquidity, which we did get. And we got this nice pullback here and a push up. So even though price has come up here, it's bounced and come down. It did break these previous areas here, which for me was a little concern. It could be a break in structure to the downside, but at the moment, this just seems to be a deeper pullback and price is now starting to bounce. There's a little pullback here and it's pushing up. 
So at the moment on the daily time frame, we seem to be in a push phase. We had this very strong bullish candle up on the Thursday. We had another push up on the Friday. So for my immediate day trading strategy, when price is in a push phase like this, I will simply mark the previous day's levels. So that would be this one here, the high and the low. And I will, I will use these in conjunction with some other um, areas of confluence, market structure, price action, Fibonacci, to look for an entry on the faster time frame for day trading opportunity. So I'm just going to keep those levels in for today, which I'll come back to a little bit later in the video. But just returning to this little range area here, like I said, we've got this nice pullback down and price is pushing up. So out of interest, I'm actually going to use this area on the daily to just use the fib tool because if we do get a bounce in the week price may come down and it may look for another pullback to retest this area here before pushing higher it sometimes does that if it needs to get more momentum to carry on moving so i'm going to just mark these key areas here this ote optimum trade entry level and remove the fib again just to keep my charts tidy um, and all i'm thinking there is if we have a choppy start to the week and price starts to fall. This could be an area that it falls into and again, could provide a potential trading opportunity. So it's nice to have these setups on the chart so that you are prepared no matter which way price goes and what it might do. You're looking at these areas where it may react to and if you get a reaction, then you know that your trade plan is a potential. So that's my kind of longer term plan on the daily for this week is just to keep an eye on this. If we get a push up, then I will retrace this Fibonacci tool, maybe move this box up um, to kind of keep an eye on that long term potential pullback area. But for immediate day to day trading, for now, I'm long biased in line with the weekly and I'm looking for breaks of these daily levels for an entry long. Now you may be wondering what this blue area is and that is called a fair value gap that I marked last week. If you missed that, check back on the video because I do explain in detail what that is, but it's from the, the daily time frame here and it's basically this big drop in price, this big gap where we didn't get any kind of retest of this area and it's usually a place where price likes to come back to, it acts like a magnet and again we may see a reaction. And I just like to drop down again to the four hourly time frame because it's still a higher time frame. It still um, holds authority, but it, it's kind of the crossover between the higher time frames and day trading. So it can just be quite a nice transition time frame to use. Now, this big drop down here was that big daily pullback we used to plot this fib area. But as you can see on the four hourly time frame, we get a little bit more information. Price pushed past this previous high. And we had a little pullback here, a little pullback here, which it seems to be pushing up against. And again, just drop into the five minute time frame, which is a time frame I like to use for trade execution. That is that little pullback in more detail. So these dotted lines represent session times. This is the price action for Friday session. So again, we had a nice pull up. A nice push up, a nice little pullback, push up, pullback during the Asian session this morning. And then at the moment, London started a little bit choppy, but it seems to be trying to push higher. So I tend to trade purely at the New York session, which is between half past one and four o'clock GMT for me here in the UK. They're the times I like to trade. So if my trade setup presents itself during those times, then I will take the trade if I'm able to. What I like to do at this time of day is because I'm on the charts, I'm not reacting in any emotional way because I have no intention of getting into a trade now. So I'm able to just plan what I may do if try price matches up. And that's what I'm going to do now. So because we're pushing up, we've pushed past this daily level here. It's not really pushed up with much momentum, but it does seem to just be pushing up. I'm still long biased. Now for the New York session, I'm going to create a plan here. So I'm going to go for the previous low of this swing here, which is also the low of the current day. I'm going to use this Fibonacci tool and apply it to the highs using the body only. And I'm interested in these three lines here. They are the optimum trade entry areas. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool to just mark those key areas and remove the fib just to keep my chart nice and tidy. And I think that going into New York, if we do sort of get price coming down a bit, 
um, into this area here and then maybe getting some sort of consolidation, push up momentum, a little pullback trade entry and then that could be a nice potential trade here. A stop below the lows and targeting just past the previous day's high and the current day's high. Um, I think that could be a potential trade plan for today because it fills this gap we've had up in price. My stop would be quite nicely under this price action here where we've launched from. It's in line with the overall daily and weekly bias, which is long. So that is basically what I'm looking to do today. By all means, I'm not set in this trade yet. I'm certainly not in any trades. This is just something I'm watching at half past one or just before I will go on the charts I'll load this up and I'll see what price is doing because it might not do this at all. It might completely push up and go without me and I might have to look for something else. It might come down, but it might break this area, in which case it has it needs to have a deeper pullback and I won't be looking to get in just then either. So it all depends on what price is doing in the current moment. But that's my initial plan, uh, technically speaking. So let's have a quick look at what news and events are due out this week as well. So here I am on forexfactory.com. It's a brilliant free resource for checking out news and events coming up for the Forex market. If you have not used Forex Factory, I definitely recommend it. And what I do here, I simply click on calendar at the top. I actually have this filtered, um, this little icon here, because you can see all types of news, but I prefer to just see the higher impact news. I'm not really interested in um, things that aren't likely to affect the market movement. So I have the red and the orange impact highlighted. And this basically shows the current upcoming news and events for this current week, the week of the 12th of June. Now it does show it for all the major pairs. So you can see there's some for Australian dollar, New Zealand, US dollar, Euro, the Japanese yen. But for me personally, I'm just sticking to trading pound dollar because my accuracy has gone so high since I've done that and my lifestyle has become easier, my stress levels have become lower, so it's a win-win all round for me to just trade one pair. Um, and such, I only look at any relevant news for the pound or the dollar, but if you trade anything else, there has loads of information on here. So for me, uh, today, we do have some news later on today. Um, obviously, this is GMT. I'm not too worried about that affecting the markets today. But this week does look to be an interesting week for US dollar. So on Tuesday, uh, firstly, we have some high impact news for the pound in the morning. So that may provide a little bit of volume in the morning moving into New York. Um, and then into New York, 1.30, which is when I usually look at the charts to trade, we do have some CPI news release, which is the uh, change in the price of goods and services. Now this can impact it quite a lot. So depending on whether it is going to be around the forecast, whether it will be below or above that um, could affect the market movements and could provide some interesting opportunities, especially if it does line up with technical analysis. So if it is um, bad news for the dollar, which means it would be stronger for the pound, which is in line with my overall weekly bias to be long, that could give the momentum that it may need to start to really give some movement and give some nice trading opportunities. So I will be watching that. On Wednesday, again, we've got some high impact news GDP release for the pound at seven in the morning, followed by core PPI for the US dollar at 130, which is a change in the price of goods and services sold by producers. Um, but then there's also FOMC, which can affect quite a lot, actually, the movement of the dollar. So I will be a little bit more cautious on Wednesday. It may be a choppy day because people may be waiting for FOMC release. Um, so that can only really gauge and judge on the day. And then moving into Thursday again for the dollar, we've got core retail sales release and unemployment claims all at 1.30 on Thursday. So again, it's quite a busy week this week for the dollar. And then Friday, finally, we have... Uh, just some high impact news here at three o'clock. So that could provide a bit of volatility or a bit of choppiness in the markets. It's just really good to be aware of these. So you can look at this on Forex Factory. Personally, I um, have a calendar that I use. I've created this myself and I basically input the data on here from Forex Factory because I like to have a hard copy on my desk so that I can see straight away at a glance what is coming out and when. But it's generally why I don't take any trades until after 1.30 because then any news releases have been released and I can see how it's affected the market on the charts and then gauge from there if there is a suitable trading opportunity. 
So that's it for my weekly outlook for this week, the 12th of June. Day trading, the Great British Pound against the US dollar. Once again, any resources I've used in this video, Forex Factory, Trading View, are in the description below if you want to check them out. I also have my recommended broker in there, FX View, that I use for live trading, and also my recommended prop firm, which is the 5 Percenters, the prop firm that I am currently with uh, using to gain capital for trading with as well. But if you've enjoyed this video, if you found some value from it, please let me know in return by hitting the like button so I'll know to create more of these videos for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And I hope you guys have a brilliant trading week. I'll catch you on my next video. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>